Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at Metal Ursus Infinity Gauntlet and this is the Infinity Gauntlet for the movie Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. And as you can see here inside the packet there's going to be two sheets uh, that are colored and it's going to come with instructional manuals that are also in kind of a color coded uh, instructional manual. And as you can see here it's about uh, roughly two pages worth uh, back and front. So looking at the manual, uh, we're going to start taking the pieces off one by one and I like using a wire snipper to snip right in between the, the openings where you're going to see like a little triangular tab that's connected to the pieces. So just uh, slowly one by one just start uh, kind of detaching the tab so that you can get the piece out. So for the infinity stones, um, you're supposed to make it kind of into like a dome shape and what I found which is the easiest way to do it is actually just using a rounded plier and you're going to bend the top and the bottom and then after that you're just going to kind of bend the shapes uh, around the sides until you get that dome shape so you're not actually really making a round shape as much as you're creating like these kind of wedge shapes and then you're just going to bend them sideways until they all meet uh, to create kind of a dome. And we're going to continue this for the four uh, infinity stones that are going to go on the knuckles. For this part that's going to go on the palm, um, you're actually going to just be bending the, uh, the top and the bottom to kind of create like a beveled uh, shape. And so it's going to look kind of like a half moon that's kind of like 3D is the best way to describe this shape. Make sure that the holes, uh, there are going to be two holes, make sure they are aligned so that later on we can put in the other piece that's going to go on top of this and it has to go through both layers of the sheet metal. Similar to the other infinity stones, uh, we're going to be doing the same exact thing but it's going to be larger stones or there's actually going to be more wedge pieces is I guess how you can say it. And so we're just going to do the top and bottom and then start bending the sides until we create kind of like a football shaped uh, infinity stone. So for this piece you're actually supposed to um, bend down the sides and then uh, kind of shape it or curve it in, until it wraps around the, the ring. But what I like doing is actually uh, curving the shapes first then bending it down so that once you bend it it should just kind of fall into place. It's a little bit easier um, if you're shaping it first. So if you have let's say like a rod that you can wrap it around it'll actually shape it a little bit nicer. Uh, but just kind of follow the, the lines of the edge of this kind of ring piece. And then after that you can bend it like I'm showing right now and then the, uh, just kind of work the edges so that they kind of meet into like a perfect round shape. So for the fingers, um, you start at the fingertip and after that you're going to kind of uh, curve the bottom of the finger and that curve should actually match the side of the, uh, the finger that you're going to see right now. There's a curvature and you're going to be matching that curve and then push it through the, all the tabs uh, starting with the fingertip first. And then once you get the fingertip tabs in, you can kind of just push in the other four tabs that are on the bottom of the finger. So for this top piece of the finger, you're going to be bending it down, but don't bend it down 90 degrees, just bend it almost to 90 degree. Um, and the reason why I say that is because you're going to actually have to wrap this around the bottom finger where the tabs are sticking out uh, 90 degrees. And so if you start off with a wider piece, it's actually easier to wrap it around and put the tabs through the hole. And then you can kind of pinch it in to get the right shape and then uh, bend the tab down to secure it in place. So for the fingers, we're going to be attaching all four fingers to this uh, kind of long strip uh, piece. And so just do one by one until you kind of get all four fingers on this one tab. So for the actual hand, 
um, you're going to be bending the sides of the hands more uh, so I kind of like using a rod and then the uh, the top and the bottom of the hand you don't have to curve it as much so just give it a slight curve just by using your fingers um, as you're bending the side it should naturally curve a little bit which should be more net enough and as you're bending it, make sure that the edges on the sides are all meeting so that it's kind of one smooth plate instead of having like a little opening in between. So for this finger, um, you're actually supposed to be attaching it on before you start shaping the palm. But I realize it's actually easier to just do if you're uh, shaping the palm first without any obstructions. Because then you can use a rod or any kind of curvature tool that you have. And then after that, you can kind of just fit the, the tab with the uh, fingers on it kind of on both sides. And just kind of pinch it down to uh, keep it in place. This piece is going to be very similar to the yellow infinity stone that was bigger, but it's going to be a smaller piece. Uh, the only difference is after you put that on the plate, uh, that's going to have that kind of like the extruded look. Um, you're actually going to attach this piece also onto another plate, so it's kind of be it's going to be kind of like a layer. So think of it kind of like a layered cake. You're going to actually have a few uh, layers of these kind of stepped rings in a sense. And then with the uh, infinity stone on top of it. And this whole piece is going to be attached to the thumb piece later on. One note for some of these parts is that when you're bending it or actually curving it and then you bend it 90 degrees, it needs to fit inside the hole. So you see the tab that are sticking out on both sides of the strip, that is going to fit in nicely to the, uh, the hole that's going to be on the, the flat side that you're pushing into. Um, so just make sure that you get the strip to be the nice curvature that follows the side of the, uh, the plate and you should be able to slip it in pretty easily. So for the thumb, it's actually very similar to the other fingers, um, except if you watch this video, you're going to see that I made a mistake where I did not put the tabs in through on the fingertip side first. Um, but you should be uh, putting in the tab that's on the fingertip first in as you're bending it in, and then the rest can fall into place pretty easily. When you're putting this uh, plate that's going to be on the base of the thumb, just be aware that there's going to be a wider side and then a narrow side of the round uh, edge. And that's actually going to be important. So make sure to look at the manual so that you're orienting to the correct way. So that when you're putting the last infinity stone plate in, um, it's actually going to be oriented the correct way and it looks uh, actually proper.
So for this kind of base palm of the thumb area, um, you're gonna be using a rounded plier um, or anything that can kind of help you make a rounded shape and you're just gonna be slowly working in the piece until it kind of becomes like a, it looks almost like an oval shaped dome uh, with the top cut off. And so you're just gonna be working the metal slowly by slowly. Um, sometimes I'm actually using my fingers, but you wanna have it so that the two edges of the, uh, the strip are actually meeting at one edge and it's gonna be perfectly aligned. So just be patient and just start working on it little by little. And uh, once you start putting it onto the palm, uh, you realize that it's probably not gonna be perfect. So you can just keep continuously working on the shaping it while you're trying to attach all the tabs into the holes. Um, so this is probably the one part of the build that I thought was the hardest part. Um, and so that's just one area that I would just say be very careful and you know, take your time with. Um, and I would actually also like to point that I did skip this part by accident because I, uh, my re recording did not uh, record. So, um, but then on the thumb, you see that I actually included the thumb and attached it onto that kind of base palm part. Uh, so I, I apologize for skipping that part. It's just that it did not actually record. Uh, sometimes my GoPro decides not to record certain things and I actually lose a clip or two here and there. For the wrist, it's actually going to be very similar to when you are uh, shaping the palm uh, of the hand, uh, where you're actually going to be bending the sides a little bit more than the actual front or the back side of the wrist. And so um, this one, I, you actually don't need to have the edges meet because you're going to have another plate that's going to be added on um, to connect, kind of connect the wrist together. Um, so don't worry about making it the perfect shape where the edges are meeting because they're not intended to meet. So for these next uh, kind of series of pieces, you're going to see that there's going to be like a series of almost tabs. And so what you're going to do is actually bend them down 90 degrees and what it does is it kind of creates like an extruded uh, shape look and especially with the curvatures on these uh, shapes it once you're bending the tabs down it kind of creates that curvature 3d shape for you um, so it's just gonna be the same thing for a lot of these pieces that are gonna be attached to this wrist part um, they're kind of just like kind of not emblems but kind of plates that you're attaching to the wrist but it, they, it kind of gives you that kind of 3D perspective that kind of uh, extrusion look So if you look at the manual, it shows that for the wrist, you're going to be actually pushing the tab in uh, on two parts and then the tab out on the top side. But what I actually ended up doing was for the top and the bottom part of the wrist, I actually have the tab sticking out 90 degrees. And this actually helps me to uh, reach in and kind of just, you know, bend down the tab easily. Because if you do it on the inside, it's kind of hard to reach unless you have a needle nose plier. 
and I didn't really mind seeing that extra tab just slightly be just because of all the ornate details on this uh, glove it, it's really not noticeable if you have the tab sticking out um, in view so for this strip uh, my best advice is to look at the base of the glove um, to get the kind of rough shape that you need to wrap around because this strip is actually going to be the end of the glove itself um, so um, if you would want to actually match the kind of curvature uh, so as you can see I kind of got a rough shape based off of where the, uh, the end of the glove is and then it's working actually from the middle of the strip I was able to fit in each side of the strip along the tabs one by one um, instead of starting at one side it was actually easy to start from the middle and going on both edges trying to fit the shapes in um, just because um, I, it gives you a little bit more freedom to move the parts around as you need to. If you um, try to do it from one end, uh, sometimes it might get a little bit sloppy. I think the easiest part of this model was actually the base stand that the glove is going to actually be attached to. So this base plate, you're just going to be pushing down the edges at an angle until like all the edges meet and it becomes a beveled stage almost. And then you're going to get the uh, these this kind of black uh, and gold piece and you're going to kind of uh, bend it into 90 degree angles until it becomes like a rectangular, rectangular box. And then this is going to be the actual stand uh, that's going to be attached to the base. The top of the stand is going to actually have four tabs, two on each side, the front and the back. And so my advice about attaching this to the glove later on is to just start with one side. So two tabs for the bottom or the top and then put that in first. And then uh, you can kind of uh, try to fit in the other two tabs on the top um, as you're putting it in. And it, once you get it in place, it will just kind of fall into place. And then you can bend the tabs down to finish the model. As we're wrapping up, I would just like to point out that this model was actually not too difficult. Um, there are parts that were very tricky, but overall, um, it's just really getting the right shape. And um, it is actually pretty forgiving, in my opinion, for this model. Um, is As long as you get certain things correctly, like the Infinity Stone and getting that thumb piece right, it's actually a decent model. And what I've actually done was do I actually created a second model that was a, actually modded a little bit so that it's going to actually have a finger snap kind of position as you can see here. And so uh, this was just for fun just because I felt like um, I can actually bend it a little bit more. So I actually had to cut some parts of the metal off to kind of give the finger bend a little bit more to uh, so kind of make it look like a singer, uh, finger snap. So here's the both models kind of uh, side by side comparison. And if you actually enjoyed watching this video, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you for watching.